consummated. Because cybersex is virtual, it's not real. So that's some of the things that they say there. And then this whole idea, which leads to this notion of, of, of CMC, cybersex, and the very idea of infidelity. And so it talks about what infidelity is. Uh, you can look at the definition uh, there, but that also is, is, depends on your interpretation of, of infidelity. Um, you know, some would argue that the cybersex is not, is not uh, uh, infidelity because it's virtual, not real. Um, some internet users spend up to 10 hours per week engaged in cybersex. Yeah, if you got nothing else to do, I guess. Uh, they have these uh, hypotheses from Peter and Valkenberg, the recreational hypothesis. Uh, such users are sexually uh, permissive sensation seekers. Uh, others, the compensation hypothesis describes such users as looking to find others to compensate for their own inadequacies that are done face to face. So if you can't do certain things face to face, at least you know you can do it um, um, through cyber sex, I guess. It's like um, technological Viagra. I don't know. Um, and so, and there's uh, there's uh, some pretty interesting stuff there um, at the end um, about how, when it comes to gender, um, how there are, are different sort of uh, 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 perspectives. A biological sex is a good predictor of motivation for infidelity. Generally, women are more likely to engage in infidelity when they experience emotional dissatisfaction, emotional dissatisfaction in their primary relationship. Men are just more sexually motivated. Go figure. Okay. Porn. Porn today, porn tomorrow. That's the next section. Uh, they talk about porn being a very big business, but sometimes folks, you know, accidentally go to porn. Um, I remember when I was teaching at LSU, um, uh, it, all this stuff was, was really new. This is the, the mid-90s, and, um, and I don't know it, it, if you've ever um, seen this, but, um, and I think one of the sites is, is, da is gone now, but I, I had somebody who knew all about technology coming in and teaching students. Uh, online uh, uh, techniques for doing research and the difference between .com, .gov, .org, and all that type of stuff. And so uh, this guy, without knowing it, said, okay, well, let's, so, so you know, if you go to whitehouse.gov, it actually goes to the White House. Blah, blah, blah. Let's see, well, what would happen if we put whitehouse.org or something like that? And so he did that and went to a porn site with, like, 20 students in the class. It was like... <laughs> I was so embarrassed, but it was so funny. Um, so, uh, so you can go to these places by accident. Um, and there's interesting stats on how men and, and, and women uh, uh, use this. Uh, multiple researchers have documented that adolescent and young adult males are, are more likely than females to view sexually explicit online content. I'm shocked. Men are more likely than women to seek visual sexual depictions as a means to experience sexual arousal for self-entertainment. Women are more likely to seek out erotic narratives in chat rooms than men. Women are less uh, likely than men to self-stimulate while using online materials. So a lot of really interesting stats, maybe stats you never would have known if you had not read this book and, and listened to my my online lecture here and, and taking this class generally. Uh, what's the big takeaway? <laughs> Again, I don't want to get caught. <laughs> Folks see uh, things from different perspectives. Um, uh, basically, here, here's the, they do talk about, so I'm not joking around here, uh, this is important, so when we think about the convergence idea, um, Getting caught by a partner, this is sort of in the middle of page 317, can transform a safe and loving relationship into one of mistrust and distance. Wives who catch their husbands using internet porn typically perceive themselves as unpleasing to their husbands and experience emotional pain by the husband's involvement with another woman or man. That would Wives typically do not view self the M-word, as wrong, but view it 
uh, to pornography as wrong. More precisely, the greater the frequency of the husband's use of porn, the greater the material issue or marital issue in the wife's view. So I guess where men are more likely, yeah, this is just fun. Uh, for women, it, it, it impacts the actual face-to-face -face relationship a, a lot more, um, which makes sense. Um, uh, so, and, and more, uh, more things. They, they sort of move straight to the dark side, but one of the things that I, I fear our book does not talk about too much um, is, is what I see is so many more bigger problems with pornography. Uh, and it goes back to sort of the feminist lens. Um, and a lot of feminists and a lot of, of critical scholars talk about this type of stuff. First, it sustains women as objects of sexual desire and normalizes it. It naturalizes and normalizes violence against women. It naturalizes and normalizes men as aggressors. We still have this boys will be boys culture. It's not their fault. Look how you're dressed. You dressed all sexy like. So, yeah, boys want to do what boys want to do. Oh, what a bunch of BS. Um, and all this stuff, from my point of view, helps to create and sustain this sort of, uh, this rape culture that we have. Um, and there's so many horrible stories. And these, these teenage girls who have committed suicide because of situations like this. So I offer you um, a, a link there for more information uh, about um, some of this stuff and, 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 uh, particularly the Steubenville, Ohio uh, uh, rape case um, that happened last year. Uh, but it's placed with housed within sort of uh, how athletes in particular sort of um, aren't, aren't really... Um, well, look at the guy from the, the Heisman Trophy winner from um, Florida State, pretty much. It's pretty clear that he, he raped somebody, but they, they didn't care. They wanted the national championship. It's just horrible. Um, but I think there's a lot more problems um, that our book doesn't talk about. I think that you know, porn is something to be critical about. Um, and then when they move to the dark side, here's a, remember the old might as well face it, I'm addicted to love video. So might as well face it, you're addicted to porn. Um, so here are the dark sides, apart from what I've already said, issues uh, of addiction. Um, people can be uh, addicted uh, to porn. It talks about um, uh, the bottom of page 317, psychological preoccupation with sexual behaviors in an effort to create a mood-altering experience, just like being addicted to drugs uh, or, or alcohol or Star Wars, whatever. Um, sexual harassment, very obviously. It talks about cyber-stalking, cyber-predators. And so there are certainly a lot of, of, of problems when it comes to the so-called, again, dark side of this. I'll let you read more about it. Implications of cyber sex and porn being part of cyber sex. More, uh, more convergence, as they say. Uh, there can be, I guess, some good things uh, about it. Um, you can have, you know, have... A, a, good online relationship, I guess. Mostly bad stuff, I think, particularly how it might impact face-to-face -face stuff. Um, but I guess this is my, they don't talk about this, but, but very uh, rarely, I think, do people contract sexually transmitted diseases through cyber sex, which I was, is a good thing, I guess. Um, but, you know, there's lots of different uh, pros and cons. I'll let you read about it. So the final conclusions. Everything, when it comes to CMC, is always a blessing and a curse, uh, good and bad, and so that's sort of uh, the stuff that they're saying here. But I do like the, the whole last little summary, and I'll let you read it. Um, but, you know, it, it's, it's they, they say we close this chapter with two optimistic observations. CMC allows relational partners to explore the meaning of gender in unique and insightful ways that can move beyond play to reinvention. When relational partners play at new ways of being and being together, they explore possible metamorphosis. A relational metamorphosis often involves change for the better, but inevitably destroys the previous status quo relationship. Thus, we offer a caution from the U.S. novelist Kurt Vonnegut. 
We are what we pretend to be, so we must be careful what we pretend to be. I think that's too simple here. Um, I think uh, there are some things to think about here um, because pretending assumes that the real is real. We're always performing. We're always pretending. Uh, that, that offers us binary thinking. So the last sentence there, it is always CMC and FDF and real and pretending all at the same time. And, and that's a, another big takeaway. Um, hope you enjoyed this chapter. Uh, we got one more to uh, cover and let me know how I can help uh, with all of uh, the stuff that you're working on. Uh, take care and enjoy the rest of your day and I will have my online office hours tonight from uh, 8 to 9. Take care.